Why do we have money? Well, before we made it the center of all human drive and suffering, early humans just exchanged goods directly. And at some point, that proved to be kind of inefficient. So more sophisticated humans invented cash. Which brings us to today, where we have invisible money and use credit cards for coffee. And then there's Bitcoin. Magic internet money. Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency. When people think of money, they usually think of cash. Dollars, euros, yen, whatever pays for your sandwich. But for the most part, money is just information. Ones and zeros in a database. And with Bitcoin, that information is the money. Quick history lesson. In May of 2017, a single Bitcoin first surpassed the price of gold. But long before that, 5,000 Bitcoins would just get you a pizza. It all began with a guy named Satoshi Nakamoto. Amidst the fallout of the financial crisis and tax-funded bailouts, Bitcoin was supposed to be a counter-argument. A currency independent of the control and demise of banks. One thing banks do do well is keeping a record of money. So you cannot spend what you don't have. Bitcoin does that as well, but with a database that belongs to everyone. The blockchain. The blockchain is a public record of every Bitcoin transaction that ever happened. But instead of one organization holding all the data, it is spread across all computers on the Bitcoin network. So if you have a Bitcoin client, you also have a piece of the blockchain. This history of transactions is essential, because every time you send a Bitcoin to someone else, you, well, need to have a Bitcoin to send. And if it's in your wallet, it's because someone put it there. So Bitcoin really is a sequence of transactions. If you send one Bitcoin to Bob and got that Bitcoin from Alice, then Bob now has a Bitcoin that belonged to you before and to Alice before that. Imagine it like this. On every dollar bill in your wallet is a list of all the previous owners. But you probably wouldn't want everyone to know about every bit of money coming in and out of your account. Which is where the crypto part of a cryptocurrency comes in. Bitcoin uses public key cryptography, in which there are two keys, one public and one private. Every message encrypted with one can only be decrypted by the other. So a message encrypted with a private key can only be decrypted with a public key and vice versa. That can serve as a kind of digital signature. Any message you can decrypt with a public key can only have been encrypted with a private key. The public key is your wallet's address, like a bank account that everyone who knows it can send money to. Your private key, however, is only used for sending money. You sign every transaction with your private key, so anyone with a public key can easily verify that it was you who made the transaction. Because being able to decrypt it with your public key means it must have been encrypted with your private key. That means, however, should you lose your private key, you can never get the money out of your wallet, because it is stuck there forever. So a Bitcoin wallet is really just a combination of a public and a private key. The information of how much money is actually in there is stored in the blockchain because it keeps a record of every transaction going in and out of there. And for some increased privacy, a wallet can generate a new address for every transaction. You could still follow a Bitcoin's transaction history, but just wouldn't know who these addresses belong to. To make sure the information in the blockchain is actually correct, someone needs to do the record keeping. And with Bitcoin, that's called mining. When you send money to Bob's address, that transaction is broadcast to the entire Bitcoin network all computers running the Bitcoin software. A whole bunch of these transactions are then collected into a block, which is submitted to the blockchain, but only if it includes a valid proof of work. To make sure not everyone is throwing whatever blocks at the network, the proof of work is an artificial increase in difficulty. A mathematical problem that takes the computer some time to figure out, but that's easy to check once the solution is found. With so much time and energy required to create a block with valid transactions and proof of work, this acts as a filter to make sure all blocks incorporated in the blockchain are actually correct. But you might ask yourself, why would anyone invest that kind of work? The answer is Bitcoin. Every miner who contributes a block gets a certain number of Bitcoins in return, in addition to any transaction fees that users can choose to provide more incentive for the miners. In fact, all Bitcoins in existence have been created as a result of blocks being added to the blockchain, which will continue until there are exactly 21 million Bitcoins. 21 million is the hard limit. At that point, no new Bitcoins will ever be created. This is probably a good time to talk about units. A single Bitcoin, as of May 2017, is worth more than $2,000. 
that makes it seemingly impractical for smaller purchases, but unlike traditional currencies, it can be divided almost indefinitely. Currently, the smallest amount is one Satoshi, one hundred millionth of a Bitcoin, worth about 0.002 cents. So instead of paying $3 for a cup of coffee, you would be paying 150,000 Satoshi. The point is, you can divide Bitcoin however you like. But just to provide some perspective, if a single Bitcoin at some point would be worth one million dollars, one Satoshi would be one cent. So if Bitcoin adoption continues to rise, then demand for Bitcoin will rise as well. But with the total supply kept at 21 million, the price can only go up, at least in theory. Bitcoin has had some spectacular crashes, and while it is the most popular cryptocurrency, it's far from being the only one. Since the source code is publicly available, there are dozens of copies, all based on the concept of the blockchain. And even within Bitcoin itself, the community is split about its long-term direction. One could easily fail or be overtaken by another. But considering a pizza used to cost 5,000 Bitcoins, you would now get 200 pizzas for a single Bitcoin because the price has only known one direction, up. <laughs>